All right, so boom, you got yourself a Hellcat, Scat Pack, RT, GT, SXT, SE, whatever the case may be. It's a Charger, a Challenger, and you want to make sure it does not get stolen. You want some legitimate security on it. Car lock has got you covered. They always do. But that's not enough. A lot of you guys say, you know what? I appreciate the vibration detection notifications, but the problem is, is I don't know where the vibration is coming from. It's not enough for the car to simply say vibration detection, right? Where's the vibration coming from? Where's the threat coming from? Is it coming from the, the front driver's side door? Is it the passenger side? Is it the rear? Is it the trunk? Is it the hood? Where is the threat coming from? Where's the vibration coming from? Let's go ahead and try to open it. Boom! Driver side door. Well, car locks got you covered because now they have these Bluetooth vibration sensors that all you got to do is 3M stick it to your door or to whatever part of the car and it will let you know exactly where someone is trying to break into your car from. Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's your boy Knockout360 here with another video, man. So as you can tell, I'm in a car. That makes this a car vlog. You already know how it's going down when I come around. I'm excited to say that because I haven't said that in a long time. Car content, car shows, car reviews, car meets, anything and everything car related happens on this channel. So if you're into that, make sure that you stick around because you're in the right place for everyone else. Hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you know what's coming out and when it's coming out. So boom, let's not act like we're uninitiated. You already know who I have in my car and who I have had in my car for quite some time, even dating back to my scat pack. Car Car lock. Car lock plugs into your OBD sensor. I don't have to go into that. You already know that. Now, here's one of the downsides of car lock that um, they have now addressed. So, boom. As you can see, you see all these notifications. You see engine start, but you also see vibration detection. Now, vibration detection is all cool, right? That lets you know that somebody has pushed up against your car. Someone has uh, hit your car. Maybe you opened the door and forgot to disarm your car lock. Some sort of vibration is taking place on the car. You know that like I know that because a lot of you guys have car lock. The only problem is it doesn't specify where the source of the threat or the vibration is coming from. So when I get a vibration detection, it could be anything. It could be somebody trying to break in on my passenger side, someone trying to break in in the rear, or someone trying to break into uh, you know, the front door on the driver's side. You just don't know. It simply tells you vibration detection. Not to mention, let's be honest here, if you're delicate enough with what you're doing as far as, you know, maybe trying to break in and maybe you do it from the back window or maybe you do it from the back door or something like that and you're delicate enough because you suspect, right? I'm in the mind of a criminal right now. You suspect that this particular car may have some sort of theft security or something in it and you're delicate of how you break in because the car lock sensor is way up here at the driver's side. If you come in through the back and you're delicate enough, you may be able to quietly, delicately do something to the car without the vibration detection being picked up by car lock. If you're, you know, um, delicate enough, I'm going to use that word again. Um, and you don't set the vibration off because I know some of you have said that you've opened up your trunk, you've opened up your back door and you had car lock active. And for some reason, you didn't get a vibration notification. Well, that's simply because because of how far away the car lock device is, considering it's up here at the OBD, it didn't pick up what you were doing way back in the trunk. Now, if you did it to the passenger side or the driver's side, it would pick it up all day long. But considering you did it so far away from the actual device, it didn't pick it up. Well, that's the purpose of these bad boys right here. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, they're double-sided double, sta double -sided, uh, 3M tape because you can tape them anywhere. And the purpose of these things is that you can put this car lock vibration sensor anywhere in your car, and it's going to tell you exactly where um, the thread is coming from. So, for instance, and I'm going to do a full installation right now, but I do want to kind of explain exactly how it works. So, I'm going to put this on my driver's side door right uh for the sake of the video i'm going to show you exactly where i'm going to do it obviously once i turn the video off i'm going to yank it off and put it somewhere else but i'm going to put this on my driver's side door and what this is going to do is that for whatever reason if i were to arm it and somebody tried to break into the driver's side door of my car i'm going to get a specific notification that says driver's side door vibration detection instead of it just saying in general vibration detection you're going to get that too it's gonna tell you specifically where the vibration is being picked up from. So imagine if you had one, two, 
three, four of these for every single door in your car. Now you could stick these things on every single door. A lot of you guys are gonna do that. And that way, when somebody tries to break in, instead of just getting a vibration notification, you can know exactly where they're trying to break in from. And it's gonna come into your car or to your phone, to the car lock device, the exact same way that they've done in the past. Now, I'm gonna go through the whole setup process and uh, we'll go from there. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do this on the driver's side. As you can tell, you should be able to replicate this on any part of the car you want to and get the same uh, reaction. So let me, give me a minute, let me get it set up and we'll go from there. All right, so before you do anything with the actual device, so here's the device, it's quite small car lock and then it's got a QR code on the back. I'm going to tell you the purpose of that. And then it comes with double-sided uh, 3M tape right here so that you can tape it wherever you want. If you're crazy enough and you just are about that life, you can actually drill holes into your car and drill it in so that it can be removed. I am not about that life, so I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, but before you do anything with the device, let's go to the car lock app, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, screen record this so you guys can see what's going on. Um, so boom. I'm in Huntersville. I'm not afraid to let you know that because obviously I don't live up here. Let's go ahead and disarm it. Um, boom. Disarm it. This is my Hellcat charger. Let's go to the smart lock option down at the bottom. So from here, you can see car lock sensors. I've got a disabled timer lock, schedule lock, enabled, whatever. This is considered a car lock sensor. So what you're going to do is car lock sensor. Then you're going to go ahead and toggle that on. It's going to say paired vibration sensors, add vibration sensor. Go ahead and click on add vibration sensor. Then you're gonna take, it's gonna ask you to scan a QR code located on the top of the car lock tag or the sensor. And all you're gonna do is take that first sensor, boom, and then it's gonna give you a number. And that number should correspond perfectly with the number that's on the actual QR code. And it does. So boom, it's gonna say the number of the QR code and it's gonna say that it's been paired. So let's go ahead and click on manage because I wanna rename that. That's gonna be front door. No, driver side door, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of my house. Driver side door. So boom, driver side door. That's the name of that particular air tag. We're not done yet. So we're done with the car lock portion, all right? So as you can see, once you go back, it'll say enabled in green. Depends on what color you have your uh, car lock set up. I've got my stuff set to green. But when you go back to manage, it's there driver side door now this is not activated yet and I'll show you exactly why and this is the part that a lot of people get you gotta unscrew this bad boy once you unscrew it you're gonna see this little tab here if I can get it to focus you see that you have got to pull that tab out before this thing is actually activated once you have pulled it out it is now activated and that's just a clear piece of whatever right it's activated we got ourselves a hot product here then you're just going to screw that bad boy back in it's really simple straightforward guys you don't need to be a mechanical engineer in order to understand this although i'm sure if you are a mechanical engineer it would probably help once let's go ahead and take that 3m sticky tape now personally I will put it on this back side. You're gonna block the QR code, which is why you wanna do the QR code first before you add the 3M sticky tape, otherwise you're a SOL. Here we go. Plug that bad boy on there. Make sure it's good on there. Then you're gonna go ahead and peel that other side off. Now, placement is everything. You do not want these devices to be seen. Personally, you want them to be hidden. So I'm gonna show you exactly where I'm gonna put my driver's side door device because you need it to be close to whatever device or whatever door or whatever side of the car that you want it to correspond to, but you want it to be out of sight, out of mind. So I'm gonna put this device, boom, right here. Boom, right here on the door. It's out of sight, out of mind. I can still use this, you know, um, section down here. Hold it there. Let's say 10 seconds just to make sure it gets a good stick. And I'm not doing any cut scenes. We're gonna do everything in one shot. Boom, so it's there. So that's how it looks. That's exactly how it looks, guys. Still got room in here to do what you do. Still got my comb, got my little pocket knife. Not quite a pocket knife, but a knife nonetheless. Um, and it's there out of sight, out of mind. And it's on the door itself. So if any vibration happens, I should be getting it from the door. Now, 
The next part is important. The next part is important. What we're gonna do is we are going to get out of the car, right? All in one shot, not doing anything crazy, no trickery. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and arm it. So those are old notifications, disregard those. The device is there, driver's side door. Let's go ahead and arm it. All right, so now we're armed. Now at this point, you wanna give it, personally, I would give it two, maybe three minutes. Once you've set it up for the first time, give it about three minutes just to, you know, uh, arm for two minutes, let's go ahead and stop it. Mind you, car lock is armed. All one shot. Let's go ahead and try to open it. Boom! Driver's side door. Sensor vibration. So it's going to say it a little differently here. Sensor vibration, Dodge Charger, Hellcat, jailbreak, driver's side door. That couldn't have been more perfect. Driver's side door. So that's it. That's perfect. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. All one shot, no mess. Let's go ahead and disarm it. Boom. Driver's side door. I'm actually gonna need these. Ugh. All one shot there guys, no trickery. I really like this feature. Now obviously, discount code still applies. Right now they are on Amazon for $24 a pop. My discount code will save you some money. So make sure that you not only use my discount for the CarLock OBD device, which you have to have this first. You have to have this first because the actual sensors communicate with the OBD and obviously the OBD communicates with your phone. So you have to have this first. Then you can go and get one of these bad boys. Now, with that being said, you don't need four. If you only want two for the front, and the passenger, that's fine. If you only want one for the front, that's fine as well. Because the reality of the situation is if you look at it and think about it, if you think about it, if somebody's trying to break into your car, at some point they're going to have to get in the driver's side. Whether they come in through the passenger side or they come in through the rear, they're going to have to sit in the driver's side. So once they sit down, you're going to get a notification. So if you don't want to spend too much money and you want to kind of go the more affordable route, you can go with one and just put it on the driver's side, or you can go with four and put it all the way around, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Because if you're smart about it and you put it out of sight, like at this point, you can't see it. It's right here, completely out of sight. Look at this big ass 18 wheeler. Make sure it don't hit me. Cool dude. Man, everybody loves Hellcats. Whenever I come back here and I'm doing my runs, they always come back here and talk to me. Super cool people. But yeah, when you place it like that, it's completely out of sight, out of mind. Just be mindful when you're putting stuff down here. But honestly, it's so far back in here, it's whatever. You know, um, you can put, and the benefit is you can put these devices anywhere. If you want to put one in your trunk, you can do that. If you want to put one under the hood of your car, I don't know why, but you can do that as well. This, the, the purpose of these devices is for you to localize exactly where the, you know, threat would be coming from. The threat, the, you know, break in, the theft, whatever is coming from, as opposed to just getting that, that general vibration detection notification. You can know exactly where and you can pair it and create the name based on wherever you're putting the device. If you're putting it on a passenger door, passenger door sensor. If you're putting it in the trunk, trunk sensor. Hood, hood, you know what I'm saying? You can do it for whatever. And uh, the biggest thing is, is you can, as long as you have a car lock OBD device plugged into your OBD, you know, you can use as many of these devices as you want. Like there is no, you know, a uh, certain amount of numbers or a certain number or set number rather that you can use. You can use however many you want. And you saw that um, once you get the notification, it's going to tell you exactly where 
the thread is coming from, whether it's your driver's side, passenger, rear, whatever. Now, me personally, they sent me four, so guess how many I'm gonna use? Four. I'm gonna put all these bad boys in the exact same location under the, uh, the door handle, out of sight, out of mind. That way I know exactly what's going on with my car at all times. The battery, to my understanding, will last you a full year because it's one of those CR2032 batteries, if I'm not mistaken, about the size of a quarter or something. Those batteries are gonna give you about a year. Um, so you're good on that that end, you know what I'm saying? They are independent and they work specifically on the battery basis, but um, yeah. You know, you can configure it however works for you, works for your budget, whatever the case may be. Me personally, I'm for all the way around because I want to know whatever is going on in my car. So if somebody tries to break in through the passenger door, I want to know exactly where. That way, in the event that they don't get in, I can look at, you know, having the police look at the fingerprints on the passenger side. That just makes things much easier. As opposed to guessing and wondering where they tried to break in, your sensor is going to tell you exactly where. So check it out, guys. Um, this is what it looks like. It's about the size of a... Uh, I don't know if you remember those uh, half dollars, like the silver dollars back in the day, the half dollars that used to come in the coins. They're about the size of that, about as thick as a cell phone. So it's easily concealable. So don't worry about it poking out or anything like that. Like I said, the battery should last you for about a year, year and a half. You're good to go. It's a slam dunk. Like, why wouldn't you? If you already have the car lock OBD device, it doesn't make sense not to get the additional vibration sensors. If you have any questions, because I'm trying to think of some questions in my head, I'm trying to poke holes in my own argument for this device, but um, I think that I've answered everything. If you have any questions, hit me in the um, uh, comments and I'll let you know, because uh, I'm you know, in contact with CarLog directly. So let me know if you have any questions with that. It will work with any, any car that can um, power the CarLog device the sensors will work with. So in other words, any car that's got an OBD sensor uh, port that's open that you can use your car lock on, you can use these vibration sensors with, if that makes sense. So once again, guys, if you got any questions, holler at me in the uh, comments or hit me on Instagram, however you want to do. But uh, this product is legit. I stand by it. And I'm going to go ahead and finish installing the other three after I turn this camera off. So like, subscribe, comment. It's Benny Boy Knockout 360. Shout out to Car Lock once again for keeping my car safe and out of the hands of somebody else that's not paying for it. See you guys in the next one. Peace.